Welcome to Ocean Chicks Films. Hey guys, welcome back to Ocean Chicks Films. I'm your host, Karen, and today on a very special episode of Deep Dive Movie Reviews, we are hanging out on location at one of the filming spots for the movie The Changeling with George C. Scott. Super excited to be here. I've wanted to come here for so long. This one's located in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada on Vancouver Island. It's absolutely gorgeous here. Um, so I'm going to show you around. This is just one of the spots where they filmed, um, but it's pretty, pretty cool. First, let's have a look at the classic film The Changeling from 1980. Composer John Russell is vacationing with his family when a car accident kills his wife and daughter. Distraught with grief, Russell leaves his home in New York City for a giant, secluded house near Seattle. Soon he starts to feel the presence of the ghost of a young boy, so he seeks the assistance of Claire Norman in uncovering the secrets of the boy's death. Directed by Peter Medak, starring George C. Scott, Trisha Vandeveer, and Melvin Douglas. Today we are at Hatley Castle on the grounds of Royal Roads University campus, located on the Hatley Park National Historic Site on Vancouver Island. And I would like to acknowledge that Royal Roads campus is located on the lands of the Kosamson or Esquimalt and Lakwangan or Sankeys ancestors and families. This place is breathtakingly gorgeous. And the castle was built in the early part of the 1900s by coal and rail baron James Dunsmere. It was meant to house King George VI and Queen Elizabeth and their children, Princess Elizabeth and Margaret. But because World War II was happening, it wasn't possible to leave England, so eventually it became used by the military. It was named the HMCS Royal Roads. So it was a military college which eventually became a public university, which is what it is now. This place is beautiful. So of course it attracts filmmakers and films and shows like X-Men, Deadpool, MacGyver, Smallville, Arrow, and on and on it goes, as well as The Changeling have been filmed here. The grounds are West Coast British Columbia at its finest. Situated beside the Pacific Ocean on 650 acres filled with hundreds of heritage trees, like 250-year-old Douglas firs and formal flower gardens with bridges, walkways, and ponds, it's absolutely quaint. But the focus of this video is the filming location of the 1980s classic film, The Changeling. So one scene in particular was filmed here, that was an end scene in the film. This is where George C. Scott's character, John Russell, drives up and enters the building to confront Senator Carmichael, played by Melvin Douglas, about his childhood being a lie. I really wanted to go inside to show you because the architecture and furniture and everything is just amazing. But you have to be either staff, a student here, or have booked a tour to go inside. So we'll have to do that next time. Wasn't that place so cool? Oh my God, it was such a fun day. It was pretty chilly out though, but really, really fun and totally worth it. I love nature so much and it's so pretty out here too. Okay, 
So now I'm gonna do the review part of this video. And just so you know, this is gonna have spoilers, so if that's not cool, you haven't seen it yet, then just click off now and we'll catch you on the next one. Or of course you could go watch the movie and then come back and chat with me, cause you know I love to chat. So this is a classic haunted house story. I love this movie so much, great acting. I mean, George C. Scott is incredible in here, um, as are everybody else. And uh, it's got a real 70s vibe to it, um, even though it's 1980. Um, I just love this one. I watch it over and over and over. I probably watch this one a couple times a year, every year, you know, ever since it came out. Now let's talk about the sets because that's kind of unusual, actually. It's not what you think it is. Gorgeous, though. But um, the house itself um, was not really there. It was like um, this fake facade put up front and they filmed that and then the rest of it was built on stage sets. Um, very elaborate stage sets though, very cool. So this part was filmed in Victoria and um, on Vancouver Island. The rest of the scenes, like the house and that kind of thing, were filmed in Vancouver and they couldn't find a house that was like that in Vancouver to use so they had to build up this fake, you know, fake persona of this house and, and stage set and all that kind of thing um, to make it look like that. Uh, still very cool. I don't know why, I'm not really sure why they didn't just do that here as well, but I don't know, for whatever reason they did it. It was probably cheaper and easier to, to film most of it uh, in Vancouver. Now they still spent quite a bit of money, in my opinion. It was like $200,000 back in 1980 to build this set. So that's pretty expensive, <laughs> I think. I still can't believe I was at a castle, <laughs> you know? I'm still, I've been living out here for like 20 some years and I still can't get over how gorgeous it is out here and how many incredible things we have to go and visit and look at and see. It's really, really amazing. Um, and so that was really cool. I really wish I could have taken you guys inside of the building because it's just designed really, really cool. But we'll have to do that another time when I can book uh, a tour and and go and do that and I think they do that in the summertime kind of thing so I think that would be fun. So in the film George C. Scott plays this very esteemed um, composer from New York City and um, he unfortunately has this uh, terrible tragedy where his wife and young daughter are killed in a car accident and from that he's devastated and knows that he has to pick up the pieces and get back on that horse and you know work again. So he gets a job offer across the country uh, in Seattle. And so he takes it and he's there to uh, be a lecturer, teach uh, kids, well, university students, I guess, or college students, um, music. And so of course his class is packed because he's very well re renowned composer and very good at what he does. So he's there and uh, he gets the, the people that are helping him out to find him this a place to stay somewhere like a house where he can, you know, practice his music and um, just be cut off from everything and kind of have that time by himself. So lo and behold, he gets this massive, huge, gorgeous mansion and he's just like, wow, and I have a use of all the furniture and whatever I want. Very cool. But not for long, because it ends up being haunted. And um, actually this story was based uh, on a true story, allegedly true story, um, of one of the writers actually had lived in Denver, I believe it was, in this house and dug up all these files and things of this, this same kind of idea where this boy had been, um, was handicapped and there were hauntings in this house. And so they modeled the house largely off the actual true life house. And the reason they didn't go to Denver to film there is because that house was actually, I think torn down in 1980, like in the early eighties. Um, so it didn't exist, it wasn't there anymore. It was turned into like an apartment complex. So they weren't able to do that. So I thought that was really cool. I had no idea of any of that. I mean, you wouldn't really know that if you were watching it, but from back watching it before, um, I only recently learned that. Um, so that's pretty cool, really interesting. It's so fun when you dig deep into these movies, how much more you learn about them and can appreciate them. So as these weird things are starting to happen, like doors are shutting on their own, he's hearing strange sounds, he's hearing voices and visions and things like that. He thinks he's going crazy because of all that stuff that's happened to him, but um, he knows there's something, so he starts with the help of this woman that's helping him 
uh, be there to research and it's like a detective kind of story and they're trying to figure out um, what had happened in the past in this house to make these things happen. Love those kinds of stories so much. It just flashes me back. I just love those kinds of movies. Um, they're just so compelling and so charming and wonderful. And that's definitely what this is. So the creepiness comes in when we learn about the little boy that passed away in the house. And his father stood to inherit this massive, huge inheritance, all this money. And the little boy had to live to be able to pass it down to him or he would have lost all the money. So this little boy was born um, disabled and um, wasn't expected to live very long. So the dad um, ended up drowning him in the bathtub. Really tragic. That scene and that moment just so heart-wrenching. Very upsetting and disturbing. Um, and then he makes the boy disappear and he ends up adopting this other kid. And it was during the war time too. So um, it was easy to, um, you know, lose all the paperwork and make everybody not really pay attention. He adopted this other kid. The kid comes back. They make it at 21. They make it like he's cured and nobody questions anything. And so the son inherits all the money and the dad gets to be rich and famous and have everything he could possibly want, keeps the secret. And then that son grows up to be the senator, which is the, the building that I showed you, that scene that I showed you. The senator doesn't know all of these things have happened. Um, and George C. C. Scott's character, um, you know, tracks him down and learns what happened and tells him, you know, this is what happened and you're, you know, <laughs> take it or leave it. I mean, there's not much we can do about it now, but that's your whole life is fake. You know, it's not real. Um, your dad was totally an evil asshole and uh, this is how things are. Anyway, he ends up, the senator ends up having a heart attack after that because he's quite elderly. Great actor as well. And uh, uh, yeah, so in the end, the, the house magically burns down because of the, the ghost boy uh, burns it down and, uh, you know, George C. Scott and they're left kind of um, just freaked out and saddened and I think he the message is he's kind of much more appreciative of like the time he had with his daughter because of this because of seeing something so horrible and how someone could be that way but um just such a haunting and such a lovely story I could watch it over and over and over it's just a classic to me and there's one of those really creepy old wheelchairs that uh they would uh, drive him around in and that kind of like becomes animated and moves and does kind of and chases people around and stuff and just makes it really creepy. Um, it reminds me of that uh, session nine. I think there's like a wheelchair sitting in a room um, when the guys are like uh, fixing up the place and uh, very creepy and haunting. And so the title comes from the sun's changing. You know, that's where the title comes from. And the ghosty stuff in this film is very subtle. There are voices, there's, you know, hazy visions, there's like doors closing by themselves, that kind of thing. Um, very subtle, but when you imagine yourself there in this massive mansion, um, it could be very scary, especially him living there by himself too. Uh, in real life, apparently the man that had that house, he did a seance with, uh, people and they actually had things happen and so in the movie they portray that as well and um what's neat is they have one of those big old-fashioned like like recorder kind of things and they tape record the session and then uh george c scott sitting at his desk at night listening to the playback and you can hear the the boy answer his name when he's being asked the question um and it's like old school EVP kind of thing, which I thought was really cool. Really, really neat. And like I said, I really love the research investigation style of this film. You know, back then you'd go to the library and you'd look up books to read about things or old news articles or microfiche, that kind of thing, and learn um, and put the facts together to figure out what's going on. I love that. Because there was no internet back then, no computers. <laughs> and apparently back then this was one of the most influential Canadian films of its time because it was Canadian produced but it was distributed worldwide and of course it was successful internationally so that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. So 
Well, this movie is kind of like a time capsule for me. And um, for me, it was reminiscent of The Omen, those kinds of movies. And I loved those back in the day as well. I used to watch those with my dad. And a very haunting, the perfect haunted house ghost kind of story. And it did win awards back then. And uh, Martin Scorsese said it was one of his top 11 scariest movies of all time. So that's kind of cool. Which brings me to my review. <laughs> so for my review, I'm gonna give it five out of five shark bites because I think it's an excellent film. It's a classic. You definitely should watch it at least once, maybe twice if you're up for it. Purchase it. It's on Blu-ray and DVD and the whole shebang. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I sure did. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments below. And um, if you've seen this movie, what did you think of it? Um, and if you want me to do more of these videos, let me know. Because um, I got a couple plans, so I think we're going to be doing some more. But, but yeah, let me know what you think. Um, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And uh, movie reviews, got lots of stuff coming up. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. Um, I love you all and we will see you again next time. Bye guys.